Hi, today I am going to talk about uh, left hand tension in violin and viola playing and uh, some exercises that we can do to, to reteach our bodies that we don't have to play with tension. And then in uh, the second half of this video, I'm going to talk about uh, some setup things that I think that you might be squeezing because you are uncomfortable with something here. But in case you're not here for that, in case you don't like, <laughs> you just want fixed right now, let's talk about uh, some exercises that you can do to help reteach your body to play without tension. Um, this video is helpful for students and teachers, any level of student, any level of teacher, performer, professionally, casually, it doesn't matter. Like We're all probably going to run into left hand tension at some point in our playing careers. Let's talk about it. Let's figure out some ways that we can, we can um, reduce the tension. It is very likely that you know that tension is bad, right? It's not good to be tense. It's not good to have tension in your playing. And you probably know, yeah, I'm squeezing with my left hand and it's bad, but I, I can't seem to stop. And so let's, let's reteach your body. Let's, we're going to use positive language here. We're going to relearn um, how to contact the instrument with just a single point on our bodies, uh, on our hands, because my point of contact with the instrument is right here. This is what supports my instrument right here. So. Uh, I'm demonstrating on my viola today because it's a larger, more cumbersome, hard to balance instrument. And so if I can do this with my big old viola, <laughs> you guys can absolutely do it with whatever your instrument is. So uh, first of all, placement of the instrument. Um, balancing the instrument and reducing tension in the left hand all comes from balancing the instrument. Um, so. Your, your left hand is really just here to hold up this side of the instrument. Um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult depending on the angle at which you hold your instrument. This has to do with um, where your chin rest is mounted. If you have a center mount chin rest, this is what I like to use on viola, um, then your placement is going to be much more like find the center of your instrument, place the center of your instrument directly onto uh, the top of your, your shoulder here. So that basically um, your, like this is the same. Do you see how like my arm, my arm is actually running behind the strings this whole time. See, this is how I would hold it. It's parallel to my strings. And that's where I find it's most comfortable for me to hold my instruments because if I can balance the instrument this way on my arm, then it really reduces the amount of work that my left hand has to do. That's how I can hold it with just a single point on my hand. Now, some of you might have a side mount chin rest, which promotes a little bit lower angle of the instrument as opposed to being up here and very parallel. Um, a side mount chin rest means that your your instrument is naturally going to be a little bit more this way. Um, many people will compensate for this droop and angle by using a shoulder rest. Um, when I was first learning how to play viola, I used this super thick acoustic grip. Um, I know I'm talking a little bit of setup here, but uh, I, I used to use a Bon Musica when I was dealing with some injury, some shoulder injury. And after I, um, I was released, I graduated from physical therapy, uh, I found that traditional hard plastic or metal backed uh, shoulder rests were actually causing more pain in my shoulder. So I had to use some sort of spongy thing. Um, and then when I started learning viola, boy was it a trip to try to learn how to balance this instrument. So I had to get this super thick acoustic grip I also had a side mount chin rest at the time. So I had the side mount chin rest and I had all of this room here to fill, but still the point stands that wherever your instrument is sitting on your body, you really only need to connect it with one point on your hand. 
and your thumb is not in that, <laughs> your thumb is not that point. It is on the other side of your hand, it is on the, the fingers side of your hand. So, some exercises. Putting your instrument up, having your right hand here always as a safety net. Don't actually support because then you're, you're supporting here and you're like, oh yeah, this is super easy. You take it away and, and your instrument droops. Um, so we have our right hand here as a safety net uh, in case something were to go crazy wrong. But work on the balance of finding where that point is on your hand where you can still reach all of the notes properly. Um, don't actually use your bow though. This is strictly a left hand exercise. You know, if you have tapes on your instrument, you can you can see if you can put your fingers down on the tapes. If not, just put your fingers down in approximately what you think are the right note spaces. Intonation is not what we're worried about right now. We're worried about reducing the tension in our hand. So, um, deal with this, experiment with this, this one point of, t uh, of contact, move it back and forth a little bit. See what it feels like that literally this is all I have to do, right? I'm, I'm not clamping here at all. You can see I still have room to clamp with my shoulder if I wanted to, but I'm not. My, my instrument, I don't use any sort of shoulder rest or pad at all. I just have this, um, this silicone grippy thing so that it doesn't slide on my clothing. The, the shoulder rest, uh, the, the instrument should rest on about your collarbone and then your head just drops into the chin rest cup. So experiment with this. You can slide very high and back down to notes you may never use in your life and back down. Um, and just experiment with what it feels like to be doing this without tension. And then figure out, once you've, you've re-situated your hand to the, the one point of contact, find where your thumb needs to be so that your fingers have uh, proper placement. For me, um, my thumb placement is, is around uh, my first finger and then kind of slides up when I need to use my fourth finger on viola since it's quite a stretch. Uh, some people say that they are more comfortable with their, their thumb being across from their second finger like all the time. Some people even play with their thumb like way under here. This, this kind of thing um, does promote a little bit of tension so I'm not a huge fan of like supporting the instrument from underneath with your thumb. That's why I like this point of, of contact. And then your thumb has the freedom to move wherever it needs to go. Um, to, to be properly placed for your, uh, for your hand frame. Um, a lot, little tip for violists, uh, especially beginning violists, you need to get comfortable with your arms swinging back and forth because uh, to play on the C string properly, you're gonna need to get your fingers to come up and around to access it. And that means that you need to bring your, sh uh, your elbow up underneath the instrument, around it, um, and get your hand much more around this way, as opposed to just trying to like stretch across, like keeping your, uh, keep your elbow in the same place uh, and stretching your fingers across is not really going to work out. But when you bring your, your elbow around, your fingers can maintain that same uh, nice curved uh, arch tunnel thing that we like to see in left hand hand frames. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the uh, exercise portion of the video. Basically find that point of contact for your instrument, figure out where you need to hold it here, and just slide up and down. Don't bring your bow into it at all. Just, just slide up and down. And then when you're ready, when you've found it and you're very comfortable here, um, finger through some scales or some exercises uh, that you're doing. Maybe uh, a piece of music that you're preparing for something for your teacher, for an ensemble, for a performance. Um, just finger through that piece. And, uh, and always focusing on 
relaxing and releasing the tension in your hand because it'll creep back in. It's going to take a while to uh, to relearn this uh, tensionless playing technique. Um, just be aware that tension can creep into other parts of your body. Like if you're tense about some sort of fast bowing passage coming up, you can start getting tense in your right hand and that tension can creep all the way around your body into your left hand. Um, and so we, we find that a lot with students that if you're stressed out about something over here, it can also be translating over here. So that's why we want you to really work on releasing the tension um, with just the left hand for a while. Practice just sitting around watching Netflix, just holding your instrument. You, you don't even have to be doing anything. You just like, just watch Netflix and hold your instrument and slide your hand around every once in a while. Um, and just make sure that it's, the tension is not there. Uh, stop periodically and, um, and make sure, are you released? Are you relaxed? And, uh, and hopefully these ideas might help you. If you have other ideas, um, other exercises that your teacher may have taught you to help reduce tension, please leave them in the comments below. And if you are curious about um, the, the this end setup uh, and how this affects your left hand tension, go ahead and watch uh, the tensionless playing part two. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to call these two videos, uh, but I'm just going to make that into a separate video. So. Let me know if this helped you and possibly see you in the next video.